Next up, we're going to build a guitar neck for Derek Kimball of Kimball Hardwoods. He's got some awesome private stock stuff that he sent me. I'm already working on the body, but I got the neck done first. This is blistered roasted maple, bird's eye maple. Really outstanding piece of wood. You can see the figure in here is really, really beautiful. Fretboard, it's a two-piece neck, fretboard and neck. Got my custom headstock shape and then we did some turquoise inlays to match the brown roasted look next still has a ton of roasted maple smell i put a varnish on here it still needs two more coats but let's get into the video and show you how it's done all right we'll start by laying out the neck i've got this great long ruler from Grizzly, 36 inch ruler with a hard edge. And then I've got a bunch of my different templates. We're gonna use a double action truss rod here. We're gonna lay this out and then we're gonna cut the truss rod on my special CNC rail jig here. And then we'll come back and relay it out. I'm not gonna put carbon fiber rods in here. I don't need to since I've got a fretboard that I'm gluing to the maple neck, it doesn't need that extra reinforcement. This is rock hard roasted maple. So then we'll take the fret slotting template, double stick tape it down. I do not like using the super glue trick. I feel like super glue bleeds every once in a while and I just don't like doing that. Once we put the tape on, we'll use some clamps and let it sit. And then I've got my portable DeWalt saw with a custom jig that I built and a pin right above. And I can just run this through really quickly and slot the fretboard easy peasy. Turn off the vacuum. And then what we'll do is find the center line on the fretboard and on the neck blank and we'll just line it all up and make sure that I've got it perfect. So once I do the truss rod, I actually come back and sort of relay it all out. Makes life a lot easier just in case the board wasn't lined up perfectly. So we'll get a chisel and clean out where the end of the truss rod is going to be. Needs just a little bit more room. Lay it out, make sure it fits. So we're going to drill, put down some glue. We're going to use type on wood glue here. Spread around, use my finger because I know where and how thick it is then. And then we're going to screw down the fretboard and we're going to get a bunch of clamps and clamp this together. I use those two pieces of wood as a sandwich, that way I get a little bit more even clamping pressure and then try and line up all of my clamps next to each other. So then we're gonna put the blank back on the template, saw it on my Craftsman 10 inch saw, trim it as close as I can to the edge, make routing a lot easier. That is my Custom headshot, headstock shape. Make sure I get it nice and trimmed. Take this upstairs to my Craftsman router, table router, and then I've got a straight edge on the top. Make sure that I've got a straight route going down, specifically right there. Got a little bit of tear out with the roasted maple. I was surprised by that. The wood becomes a little bit brittle. And then we're gonna do a back cut on the fretboard. This allows for that little bit of an overhang. So we rough cut it on the saw, trim it. And then I've got a, another router with a quarter inch bit and we're just gonna finish up the back cut and clean it up. So we'll raise that a couple of times and get it set up nicely. That way I've got the profile right. 
and the lip perfectly. Got a 10 millimeter drill bit and we're just going to drill before we slice off the face. That way I don't get any tear out. We're going to measure exactly what we want to cut off from the face. Take it back upstairs to the bandsaw. You can see I'm holding it so that it leaves me with a level cut. And then we'll take this back upstairs to the spindle sander and then sand off where that cut was. You can see I'm holding the neck so that I get a level, even sand. It's a little bit harder to do than what you think, but it just takes a little bit of practice. Back and forth, get it nice and level. And then we'll start to clean off where the rest of the cut is. I've got a Japanese mini gouge. And I even got my bigger gouge here. And I'm trying to get that line out where I cut it. So we'll go back and forth with a couple different tools. There I'm cleaning out the truss rod cavity. Make sure I get it nice and clean. Try and adjust the truss rod. Make sure I've got enough room. The reason I applied the glue with my hand is then I could eat, put it in the right spots, make sure it's not too thick. And I bought this tool on Amazon a while back. It's like a rolling pin sander. And we use that just to uh, use, do the contours of the neck and anything that, that needs a contour. First time using it. We'll share that with you guys in a later video. Change out the grit. Go with a little bit smaller of a sleeve here. And then we're going to take my template for the fret dots and drill out for the fret dots. We're going to do a custom turquoise fret dot. And it matches up with this dark roasted brown color. So this is man-made man turquoise. I've had this for a couple of years and I just love the brown and the blue color. And Mr. Kimball wanted a blue guitar. At least that's what he told me in the beginning. Let's we'll see if he changes his mind. We get some glue boost super glue and we glue down the man-made turquoise into the frets or into the fret dots. And then I've got a custom-made inlay. The only problem with doing it this way sometimes is that I get a little bit of seepage of the super glue into the fretboard and it seals it. You can see that later when I sort of zoom in. But this is the way to do custom inlays. I've done this with malachite sand and ivory and a bunch of different stuff, but I do really like this turquoise look. It's very unique. So we put one layer of glue on, glue it down, and then we come back with a second layer and put that on. Then we're going to drill the side dots and we're also going to use turquoise for that as well. Guitars and Woods in Portugal has some really nice templates that do this relatively quickly. I'm actually using a 25 inch scale and just moving it over. For some reason I bought the 25 inch versus the 25 and a half. So just modding it here for what I've got. I could actually make these on my CNC, just haven't done it yet. And then the trick with doing the side dots is to get a piece of paper underneath like this, just dump it in, use a toothpick to sort of push in into the gap so you get it nice and flat, and then come back with the super glue and do the same thing. So you just want to push it down to get that look. So this is how I do roundovers on my neck. I've got a big heavy board, and this is a 59 profile that I found on Amazon. What I do is use this big heavy board and then run it through on my overarm pin router, flip it over, do it on both sides. This really makes a huge difference in terms of just 
time. And then I can just carve to that profile on the ends. Make sure I've got the right look. So I've just got one of the Stumac Japanese rasps and a spoke shave. And then what I do is I sort of recarve the profile a little bit further down and just feel it out with my hands. A lot of back and forth process. This rasp is really nice to, to do it. It's probably one of my favorite tools is using that rasp. The files work really well on Maple. Really enjoy using that. So then once we get the back profile carved, we're gonna come and hand carve the fretboard radius. I've got a nine and a half inch radius and I just do this by hand and I vacuum this up. We're gonna go with 80, 120, 220, and 320 and just keep swapping out the different grits and keep sanding. Make sure you clean out the frets. And then I actually round over a little bit of the fretboard just so you don't have that hard edge. Tons of sanding then, lots of sanding to get this all done once it's all set. Start with 80 all the way up to 320. And then I used a razor blade to scrape off where the spoke shave dug out some of the birds. And we'll just keep sanding away. You guys know how much I love sanding. So then once We've got it all sanded, fretboard's clean. Make sure you clean out those frets and then we'll start fretting. And what I've learned is that trimming the ends of the frets and getting them flat before I insert them has made a huge difference in the sanding work on the sides later. So we add a little bit of type on glue, push it down, you do not want to push too hard. You just want it to pop in, but you don't want it to over push where you dent the fret with the fretboard. That's one of the biggest mistakes I see guys make is that they over push. You just want to pop it in with a feel, but you don't want to push down too hard. So make sure you have a wet rag, pop these in. And then what I like to do is glue them down with the radius uh, tool and just clamp it down to the bench, put about seven frets in at a time, clamp it down overnight, and I usually do fretting over three days. So here you can see I'm clamping it and we're just gonna let this sit. I'm only doing three here for the video. But this keeps the ends down, make sure it's all flat, and then double check with that Stu Mac fret depth. Make sure I've got it at the right depth. And I could see a couple of them needed a little bit of TLC. So then once all the frets are in, we're going to use a diamond file. We're gonna file the edges of the frets down. I never like cutting them in the slot. I feel like after I've glued them, if I cut, sometimes you can twist and move the fret up. So I like only just uh, using the diamond file and getting these clean. And since it's fretting, you wanna be as careful as you can doing this. I've got my custom made, uh, I don't even know what this is called, side file where it takes it to a 35 degree angle. So one side is flat, one side is at a 35 degree angle. I made one of these in a video years ago and use kind of a whole set of tools when I'm trying to get this right. And 
And I noticed that if I'm pushing down and turning the neck on an angle, I get a little bit better feel doing it that way. And since I rounded over the fretboard just slightly, it takes a little bit more fretting work then to get the frets, frets flush with the fretboard. Say that three times fast. So I'm not gonna level the frets until I get the guitar built and then I can see where I've got any high spots. The way I fret, I usually don't have too much fretting work to do because I've got it nice and set. So I will come back with some 320 sandpaper though and make sure that everything is nice and clean on the fret sides before I put my finish on. The finish that we're gonna put on this is a wipe on urethane. I'm gonna put on three coats. The first coat, I'm just gonna let it soak in. This stuff really soaks in well. It's a little bit heavier of a oil than like a wipe on poly. The urethane is definitely uh, seeps into the wood more. And then since I'm doing the fretboard and the neck, it'll get sort of a nice feel. So we're gonna do three coats. First coat, we just let it soak in, let it dry for a week, and then we'll put the second and third coat on real light. And then the neck has that really smooth feel. So here is a bunch of pictures of the neck. Gonna start working on the body here. Uh, it takes a little bit longer. I'm gonna do the same arm cutout that I did with the Brandon Dion guitar. Kimball sent me some amazing tops and backs for this. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next video.